back to the Light and Life podcast, conversations on faith and life here in downtown Colorado Springs. So excited because today we're going to be talking about building trust in a distressful age. I'm your host, Liza, here with Pastor Tim. Hey, Liza. How's it going? It's good. <laughs> I, I love how we you. start. I trust you. <laughs> you do? I do. You mean it? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm blushing. That's, <laughs> stop it. Um, I think it's funny how every time we're like, hey, Tim, but yeah. we're, you know. Right. Just right next to each other. Right. I've already said hi. That's just, true. Just so you guys know. <laughs> Building trust. Yep. Well, how was your day? Uh, full day. It was a good day. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to be doing this. Me too. Um, it's and, a good uh, end to the day. It's a good end to the day. Nice yeah. late afternoon treat. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun. Today. And, and people are talking to me about our episodes. Like Sunday, one of them came out about jobs and stuff. And Oh, cool. So everybody was coming up and talking to me about jobs that I've done and that they've done and good so, it's fun I appreciate yeah all the you guys mystery jobs you've done in your past life yeah <laughs> which is a lot uh-huh yep i, I want to go back it's narrowing i've been doing this job of pastor now for quite some time mm-hmm. i used to go job 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 you know how often was that so i might have to get a secret identity and a secret job oh my gosh it's jason born <laughs> <laughs> um well what made you pick you know this topic today well, um, I think we're in a trust deficit era. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you feel that way, but I think it's hard for people to trust. Um, it's hard for people to just sort of give trust to institutions. There's, there's, uh, there's statistics out there that people don't trust their uh, leadership as much as they used to, whether it's at work or at, uh, at school or at church or in the government. Um, mm-hmm. That it's there's kind of a, almost a I think there's almost a default developing that if someone is in authority they're probably untrustworthy mm-hmm. and um, out to get you out to get you or something right. and um, but I think people find it hard to trust I mean does that resonate with you Well yeah it's actually funny that um, this is the topic today because just yesterday we were talking about this initiative to get to know your neighbor that yeah, the city's the city actually initiative. doing mm-hmm. and I even see myself. You know, if I see a stranger walking on my street and um, Ellie and I were actually walking her dog, Odie. Yes. And a stranger comes up yeah. asking question, questions about the dog. And all of a sudden my guard is super up because I don't know this person or I haven't seen them in this context before. Yeah. And I'm just like, what happened? Why? <laughs> yeah. Why am I not being neighborly or excited to see this person? And I think... A lot of it stems from maybe pre-COVID times versus post-COVID times, huh. how you know everyone was really alone, and now it's like we're all within the safety of our home, so that translates to a bunch of different areas of life or interpersonal skills that have started yeah. to diminish since COVID. I don't know, but I can, I can yeah. feel the distrust in myself of other people when I was usually way too quick to trust a person. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. I mean, I think we will grow we will grow in the next couple of decades learning how it was for particularly for children mm-hmm. to have this global pandemic set in and to and to think uh, pe- any person approaching me like getting into my circle, my 10-foot circle is a threat. Yes. And um and so that that definitely sets us, you know, just as a, if you've got that as your default, like a person is a threat, a person is a threat, a person is a threat. Then you've got this sense of like, well, how can I get close to you? Or how can I, how can I trust you? Or, mm-hmm. um, and e- that's even physically get close. But how do you trust people? How do you know who to trust? Um, I, I was talking about this in a sermon, so I went and did a little bit of uh, Googling. And, um, and I... I found out that uh, in 1958, 75% of the population trusted the government to do what is right most of the time, 75%. And today, it's 16%. So that's from 58, that's like, what is that? Probably like 50 years. And uh, it's more than that. Carry the one, (laughs) just kidding. (laughs) Um, But the decline in these last few generations of uh, someone, how can I trust the people around me? That's just one indication. And um, so it's so it's not just government. I think it's, um, 
like you say, maybe it's a post-COVID thing. Maybe it's a generational thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, too, that uh, one of the key questions that Gen Z asks is, who can I trust? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can I trust you? So trust is a huge issue. It's hard to trust. But you've got to have some trust to be able to have relationships. Absolutely. I'm wondering in these statistics if how, – how did they um, – quantify trust mm. or is it just a yes or no question and 16 percent of the respondents said yes is that how it worked i think it was i'm now i don't have my my research in front of me liza okay sorry but, uh, no it's okay <laughs> i think this was barna and i think uh it was a i think it was a barna poll um and uh it was the question was something like do you trust the government to do what is right most of the time and it was yes no maybe that sort of thing but mm -hmm. but a huge shift like just groundswell, I don't trust, if you're in power, I don't trust you. And I think that's, I think there's just a lot of that. But, but what about trust between one another? How do you, how do you build trust? Because honestly, you can't, you know, you, you, you're not going to have relationships without trust. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think it translates to uh, romantic relationships, friendships, um, you know, boss to subordinate relationships in a workplace like how how are you to trust your c-suite executives to take um a business to you know a profitable place a place yeah. that feels like a safe workplace environment like all these different factors play into that but i mean down to its core love requires trust yeah right like if you're gonna get close enough to somebody to experience love, at some point it's got to get past the um, like I'm to I'm scrutinizing everything you do. Uh -huh. like I'm I'm watching and I'm, I'm really cynical. I'm, I'm cynical. Mm -hmm. I'm doubting. Like you said, you you're what you're in jury selection right now. Oh my gosh. You're, well, so you're going to decide the future of justice in Colorado Springs. Terrifying. That's a terrifying <laughs> thought, folks. I'm so sorry if you're involved in this. <laughs> no, I today was actually hilarious because this morning I realized that I was supposed to call in for jury duty last oh, call night. In. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this morning I accidentally woke up at 7:56 a.m. I was supposed to be at court at 8 a.m. And you made it. No, <laughs> no. So I called and um, it was like an automated message. If you're juror number X, Y, Z, like your jury duty has been fulfilled for the year. You are not needed. And I was on my way, like <laughs> hadn't brushed my teeth, nothing. Yeah. Um, and so by the grace of God, I am here today to tell the tale that <laughs> I somehow lucked out. Um but I was saying if someone's jurisdiction is up to me, yeah, Lord Watch help out. them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Well, I mean, I actually, I, I've never done, this is the weirdest thing, but I've had, I have never, I shouldn't say it, but I mean, in New Jersey and Georgia, I don't know what's on my profile, but I have never, ever, <laughs> ever been called for jury duty. Huh. Not one time. So I think that's kind of weird. Maybe I'm not really a citizen, but... Um, <laughs> Well, they sent it to my wrong address, so thank okay. goodness I know the people that used to live at my old house. Oh. <laughs> and they said. So I trusted them. They, I trusted them. But to, you, yeah, you trusted them. To but tell you, me. <laughs> but, but you imagine that process, which I know only by watching television and movies, sure. but of where they, they're selecting the jurors and they're going to scrutinize like every little they're just going to keep them up there on the chair and just they're going to scrutinize like every little answer and every mm -hmm. little like turn of their head or gesture or facial, you know, tick or whatever. Yeah. It's going to say, ooh, that's not a person we want on the jury. And um, sometimes we're going into our relationships like that. Like, uh, like guard up. The guard is up. Like um, maybe it's with someone that's a potential friend. Maybe it's with someone that's a potential, you know, a coworker or mm -hmm. your boss or – uh, your pastor or someone that you might want to develop a romantic relationship with. Right. Like how long are you going to stay in that place where you are, I'm picking my jury, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to scrutinize everything you do. Eventually you have to say, all right, I've got to get myself from scrutiny and judgment and cynicism to I'm going to risk trusting you now. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Well, I, it's funny that you say that because I specifically remember a quote from Floyd Seabald, um, my fellow's year, where, you know, it's a program, it goes fast. You don't know anyone in the city. You've just moved here. There's a bunch of people your age who had just graduated. And you're supposed to just go ahead and trust them. Right. Like, that's really hard to do. Someone um, just stands up in front and says, okay, now trust. Right, right. And that's hard. You can exercise You know, like, that. here, give your whole entire testimony, your whole life story to all these people who don't know you and you don't know how you're going to be received. Like, that's a really hard task. Yeah. And it's a really trust-based decision um, when you have no grounds for trust previously. But what he said was, um, in this community, you know, it's such a short length of time that we're going to be together. There's no, um, there's no time to not freely give out your trust. Um, there's no time for you to feel like you have to earn other people's trust. It needs to be freely given and freely received. Yeah. And I thought that was such a beautiful thing because I think the cynicism that we're talking about is, um, kind of grounds for transactional friendships where it's like what can be gained from a relationship with someone like that's kind of almost what you're seeing if you're waiting to trust them it's like what can i get out of yeah. you yeah and ha- and you're you're trying to protect yourself yeah, it's self preservation for yeah. sure um but i think that's you know really harmful in the grand scheme of things if you're wanting to you know from a christian perspective try to be love and reflect love. Yeah. Doing everything out of transaction is not love. Yeah. Or, or not a true sense of love because it should be, you know, for no reason, for the good of the other person, loving That's them. right. I'm thinking about um, the passage that I'm not going to quote very well, but um, where it says, Jesus did not give himself to them, for he knows what is in the hearts of man, something like that, mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, but so Jesus, uh, even knowing that he couldn't trust us, he did give himself away to us. Mm-hmm. That So I didn't quote it very well. Or, or, But he knows what's in the hearts of man. Nevertheless, he gave his life on the cross for us. He gave himself to us. And so we as Christians, we want to be kind of like that. We want to Say, well, wait a minute. You, I don't. I want to. I want to develop ways to grow and trust um, beyond just um, like you proving yourself. There's the, there's an old adage: uh, you gain trust in spoonfuls and you spill it in barrels. Have you ever heard that? Yes, you said it in on, a recent sermon. In Sunday, on Sunday morning, I yes. said it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Had you heard wait, it before that? Can you say that? that? No, no. You you can gain you trust that? in spoonfuls. Uh huh. You spill it in barrels. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Totally, totally. Because you takes, can blow, you, you can, can blow, blow it. it very quickly. Yep. And so I think too, though you can, you can give somebody a barrel of trust, mm-hmm. but when they spill it, uh, it's only going to get gained back bit by bit. Like, yeah. like, hey, um, now we're going to have to go slow because now you spilled all of it, and it's only going to get gained back. Like, I can't just go get another barrel. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's one of the realities of trust. But I thought, um, I thought of five categories that, as a pastor, I've 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 seen, and in scripture I've seen, uh, that are categories of um, sort of areas where we can grow trust. Because sometimes it says, "I want to be more. I want to build trust in a distrustful age. I know everybody is distrusting. I would rather um, be able to build trust where I can." I would be to be able to enter relationships of love with risk. So what are some areas? So I thought of of five. So the first one is I think trust is built um, by faithfulness. I think we look for faithfulness. And what I mean by faithfulness is you, you look for someone making a promise and, and keeping that promise. Mm-hmm. So if someone... Um, does someone follow through? Uh, and when you think about trusting someone, somewhere inside you, you're asking, well, are they faithful? And, and that could be measured in, in enormous ways, or in, but the little small ways matter too, I think. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I, I mean, I, I totally agree. I think 
this is so weird, but the first thing that came to my mind is like a doctor patient relationship. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Where, I mean, there's HIPAA laws to protect you, right? So you already have that trust, but it's like you have faith that the doctor will keep that, like your health information confidential. Not that there's something crazy to hide, but it's like, yeah. that's an incredibly vulnerable space. Um, or if you ask a friend to, you know, keep keep something between just you and that person. Right. You're trusting that they'll keep their word to you. Keep their word. Um, because it's not their information to. And I think spread. even those little things, I mean, I think, I think we should be aware that the little things matter. Like if you say, I'm going to pick you up some a coffee or something, and then you don't. Or you, I, I don't know. That's <laughs> devastating blow. Devastating yeah, blow. You, like, yeah, you're well, looking forward to that coffee all day. So, you know, there goes <laughs> it doesn't a, come to you. There goes a barrel of trust. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you know, all gone. It's all gone. No, but but that those little things do matter. Like, is this is this a person that um, that I don't know? They're, my word is my bond, kind of thing. Like, if right. if I've said I'm going to be there, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not there, then that's um, that makes a statement. Makes a statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so faithfulness mm -hmm. is one area. Maybe a blood oath. <laughs> blood oath. <laughs> if you wanted to. Yeah. That, that could right. build trust for sure. I'm just kidding. That's one way, yep, to <laughs> fill a barrel. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, so number two, uh, I thought of the category of character. Character. Which um, I look at as being the same person up close as they are f far away. So that the closer you get to somebody... Uh, you realize, oh, they have integrity. And integrity means wholeness. Mm -hmm. Like you think of disintegration as something coming apart into pieces. Integrity means it all fits together. It's all a whole. And I think we've all had experiences with people that um, they look really great from far away or, you know, you've heard about them and they've got a great reputation or something. And then as you get closer, you realize, oh, there's a, there's a persona that's really great, mm -hmm. but then there's also a person who's totally different from the persona. In a good way or a bad In way? In a bad way. Right. And then you're kind of like, oh, I don't think I can trust that, um, this sort of two-person thing. I remember um, uh, someone that I was working with asked me to do a project with John Ortberg, who's a pastor and, and uh, very famous. Like in, in my circles, he's like, oh, I, I wish I could, it was John Ortberg. But, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> but I quote him and stuff, and people are like, I don't know who that is. But very successful author, Christian author, pastor. And, um, and what this friend said to me is, you're really going to like him. The closer you get to him, the more you see he's the real deal. And that he's the same guy. Uh, whether you're he's on stage in front of ten thousand people or whether he's sitting there with you drinking coffee, that's cool. And I know that's cool. So I, I aspire to be that way. You know, I just think that's important. Well, I think you are. Oh well, just thanks. so you know. Um, yeah, I, it kind of reminds me of what sport coaches would say <laughs> growing up, where you know you're doing push-ups and the coach looks away and it's like, are you still doing push-ups like you're supposed to be? Like yeah. you who are you when nobody's watching right and is that reflective of the same person that you you are when people are watching yeah i think that's like a really cool standard to hold yourself to and to look out for in other people yeah and we've all got those gaps um mm -hmm. that we want to close we want the lord to bring together and close and make us a whole person you know not a category categorized person who's this person over here and this person over there it's very that's very disintegrating for the soul. Like you really just want to be whole, right? And um, and and I think for trust, for building trust, when you find somebody that it feels like there's a wholeness there, there's an in integrity there, then you can build trust on that. Uh -huh. So the third category is humility, and um, you know you want to look for that person who uh, is uh, who you can tell that they. I mean, what do you think is a marker of humility? Um, I think it's someone who, you know, if something really great happens and it was to the credit of a person that they don't go out of their way to try to take credit. I think that's um, a humble it's a thing. Humble, yeah, humble I trait. Think, yeah, I think it's also like if something negative happens, um, they take ownership or accountability for it. Yeah. 
Um, no blame shifting. No blame shifting. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it is owning up to mistakes, especially mm. in like a group setting for the betterment of like a whole community. Yeah. Um, and also uplifting other people rather than trying to like take credit for every good thing that happens. I yeah. don't know. Am I yeah, making no, sense? Those are two good humble leader qualities of um, not needing the credit, not needing the shine mm -hmm. from from other people's contributions, but really wanting them to shine. Sure. And um, and then that sense of, I really do think of humility. I, I had a friend say to me once, you know, humility is being willing to uh, own a mistake mm -hmm. at the same level that it was made. So there's sort of like, you know, I don't think... I don't think this is the right way to use the term humble brag, but um, <laughs> there's a there's a way to do humility where it's like I I made a mistake with one person instead of apologizing to them because it was a one person mistake. Mm -hmm. Like I make a big thing about it in public, and then that's that's kind of a reversal of humility. Whoa, where <laughs> my brain's broken. I know because <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to show everybody how how regretful you are, awesomely and... humble you are. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's 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 not just owning the mistake but owning it at that at that same level if it was a one-to-one -one mistake own it at the one-to-one -one level mm -hmm. if it was a group mistake own it at the group level if it was a nationwide global error you got to get up on the global stage get <laughs> and say <"Whoa." laughs> but um yeah, humility. I forgot to show up for jury duty <laughs> to the whole nation. Yes. <laughs> Dear U.S. government and all citizens of the country. I failed you. I, <laughs> today, And in I turn, failed have you. failed myself. <laughs> That's good. All right. Uh, Another category I thought of was gentleness. Gentleness. When I am in your care, do you take care of me? A, a gentle spirit. That, um, that sees the person in front of them, uh, wants what's best for them, wants to take care of them. I think trust grows when you see that, mm -hmm. when you find that, um, that gentleness uh, of wanting to care for somebody. Right. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit, and it's one that people um, just run right past. The nine fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is... Um, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Self-control. Gentleness. Shoot. See? You <laughs> yeah. jumped. You jumped right over I it. did jump. Yeah, gentleness is that uh, that one that gets maybe sometimes left behind. But uh, but I think that's an area where trust is built, when you find someone who's, who's gentle and kind. Mm. So what's five? Intimacy. Okay. Intimacy. When you get close, like we said with character, the closer you get, the more you realize this is the same person up close as far away. But what is it like to sit uh, in those spaces of, of intimacy? And I always think of, of um, uh, breaking bread together, of, of eating together. Mm -hmm. Like there's, whole, there's business books about never hire somebody until you've gone out to dinner together and seen how they treat the wait staff or how they... Oh, that's cool. Which is cool, right? I've seen things where it's like, don't hire someone if they salt their food before tasting it. Ah. <laughs> right? Like, they're not problem solving. They're not problem solving? <laughs> they're not problem solvers if they salt it before even trying it. That and, could, see, we could skip all these steps uh -huh. and just go for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. Because if someone doesn't want to taste it first... It, what does that say? I don't know. My way is better regardless of how it's Exactly. Uh-huh. That's exactly what she's saying. No, uh -huh. no. I mean, what this person is saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, but I... I think I know someone very well who salts her food before tasting it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who? That I'm not going to say. I but, feel like you should But tell I know me. her pretty well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well... But yes, I mean, you've got a whole staff me. back there in the kitchen <laughs> who's like, this is exactly how this should taste. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they put it out on the table, and they put it in front of you, and like they've they've put their whole heart, life, yeah, it's their lifeblood. And you're just gonna throw salt right on it right there. The nerve, the nerve, the audacity. And yeah. you know, same thing with steak sauce. Yeah, a chef hates it when you ask for steak sauce. Yeah, so just taste it first. Is all I'm saying. I mean, I'm even. I even like even with corn. Like, <laughs> I'll taste it first before right. I put the butter and the salt and the. Of course. Like, 
course. Because you're not a maniac. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to intimacy. What's it like to sit at the table and break bread with you? Yeah, yeah. I think um, sitting with someone and, and seeing how they interact in a group setting around other people and then interpersonally one-to-one, but also with the people that are serving them. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. Yeah. But what if they were just raised differently? And, you know, like, do you hold things like that against a person? Right. No. But I don't know. But, yeah. If someone's raised to say, like, I was always raised to say, may I please have yeah. this, this, then say thank you. Some people say, like, I remember just like my ears shrilling at a restaurant when mm. someone just points at something. And it's like, I'll get this. I'll get this. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I remember being like, <gasps> right. <laughs> the blasphemy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you're overly nice. Like, if, have you ever yeah. sat with a friend who's kind of rude to a waiter and you're oh, yeah. overly nice to them? You're like, to the wait staff to like make up for oh, your no, friend? Oh, no, it's great. Oh, <laughs> you're like, how many like raw steaks? <laughs> Do you wind up eating? Because you, you, so you're like, I don't want to say, no. say anything. About I'll get it. the completely wrong order and I will eat it and be like so fine. That's right. <laughs> I'll complain about it later. I'll, I'll be so fine there, but then I'll complain about it. Later. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but building trust. Yeah. I mean, getting into that close place where you can have those shared experiences that are intimate. Um, and we talked a little bit about Jesus who extended himself. But I think, I think it's amazing how when Jesus called his disciples— uh, they they seem to trust him right away. Um, John one thirty nine, uh, come Jesus replied, uh, sorry, uh, this is Jesus calling his disciples, and he would come and call his disciples, and he'd say, follow me, and this is not Jesus uh, speaking, but um, uh, come he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. John one thirty nine, when he was calling his earliest disciples. You know, Jesus just allowed them to come close and, and say, come come camp with me, come to my space, come into my circle, come into my uh, where, I'm, where I'm living, where I'm eating, where I'm sleeping, uh, get closer to me. And as they got closer to Jesus, uh, they knew that he was the same person all the way through. They knew that he had character, that he was humble and gentle and, um, and faithful, and they knew that he could, uh, could trust you, so that, that they could trust him. So I think the most important thing for us as Christians is building our trust in Mm -hmm. Jesus. And um, how do you build your trust in Jesus? Yep, I think through um, Scripture and prayer, it's relational. Yeah. I think learning about all of his miracles and the way that he interacted with each individual that he um, touched the life of is really consistent with his character. Yeah. Um, and so I think when I doubt his character, I doubt yes. his plans for me. I can always go back to like what I know is true, and there's nothing inconsistent. And knowing that, you know, Jesus is never changing; he always stays the same. Mm. Um, he is love. He is light, mm. and he um, wants the good for us, for his it, people. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the gift of the gospels is that these stories are there. And they never, they don't shift, they don't change, they're there, they're set. And in a distrustful age where even Jesus is subject to a lot of distrust Mm -hmm. uh, by the people around us, and we can feel that, and we can forget who Jesus is, we can always return to these stories of Jesus and what he did, and not just watch him teach, but watch him act and watch him make decisions. And and we see him trustworthy, faithful, humble, self-giving, loving, and we're reminded again that we can continue to trust him, mm-hmm. even in a distrustful age. Well, that about wraps up our time. Thank you so much, Pastor Tim, um, for speaking on this. And if you're enjoying these conversations on faith and life, please leave us a review so that we can find, or more people can find this podcast. And we'd love for you to join with us in the conversation. And if there's a topic you'd like to discuss, as always, feel free to send an email to podcast at firstprescos.org. And if you're watching the video version on YouTube, please leave a comment below and let us know um, how these podcasts are going and what you'd like to hear moving forward. Um, We'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we discuss the most inclusive community. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks.